This is RTP. This is RTP 180. How's everybody this evening? Excellent. I don't get to ask that on TV. I ask that, I'm like, <laughs> this is really fun. You guys are actually adults, right? Are you? Yes. Um, I get to talk to a lot of second graders, sometimes even the fifth graders. <laughs> I really feel really special then. I'll tell you, I also, um, I, I get to walk like w all across the wall and use my hands a lot. So if I fall off the edge of the stage, I apologize. <laughs> um, this is really exciting. Um, I'm so happy to be here and talk to you guys about weather and climate. Um, I feel like I've brushed up on that because I'm also a coach for my kids' elementary science Olympiad team. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, it's a lot of fun. Um, I, I feel like part of my job is some science education. I'm talking to people who are typically not scientists, and so we try to explain things in a way that everybody will understand, and uh, it's fun to be able to take that to the, to the kids as well. So I'm going to be talking about staying safe in a changing climate, and we're going to talk a little bit more about what is the difference between weather and climate. So weather is what I talk about every day. If you happen to watch me on WRAL, I do the morning and the noon newscast there. So I'm talking about what's happening today, what's happening for the next seven days. Climate is what happens over a longer period of time. We're going to talk about what our climate normals are and how they're starting to change and what that really means for us. But that's the big difference. So weather is what I tell you on TV. Climate is what happens over a long period of time. So we have a humid climate here in this part of North Carolina. Um, it is a fairly warm climate. Now, of course, in the wintertime, it's not humid and it's not warm. But generally, our climate is warm and humid. So that's what climate really means. Uh, normals are changing. Of course, there's plenty of research to show that we are warming up our planet. So as we go ahead, when we talk about normals, and we talk about that, I talk about normals on TV almost every day. So the normal, if you were wondering what in the world does that mean, it's a 30-year average. And so currently, our normals are from 1981 to 2010. And in a couple of years, we'll move that ahead, and it will end at 2020. So it'll go 1991 to 2020. As we go through time, we're seeing that really start to climb. So back from 1951 to 1980, you can see there that it wasn't really climbing a whole lot. And then as we got closer to, uh, say, the, the late 80s into the 90s, we're really starting to see that normal, that 30-year average climbing. One thing about this is that, you know, we may say, okay, today our normal high is 88 degrees. 10 years from now, today's normal high might be 89. 50 years from now, today's normal high might be 90. And so when we're looking at that, we talk about how does that relate to what our weather is today? So our high temperature today, I didn't actually go back and look at what today's high was, but yesterday's high was 94 and our normal was 88. So we know, well, it's not, you know, not normally this warm, but of course the normal is a midpoint between the extremes. And if our climate is healthy, then our temperatures are gonna be on either side of that normal. So we may be that, but as we go through time, if that normal is rising, it may be that people don't realize. We have to look back through history and say, well, you know, 50 years ago, our normals were a lot more cool than they are right now. So why do we care if we're warming our atmosphere, and what does that really mean for our weather? The more, uh, the warmer our atmosphere is, the more moisture it will hold. So as you warm up the atmosphere one degree, it can hold 4% more water vapor. The more water vapor that you have in the atmosphere, the more rain can fall out of it. So if you have a cold front come through, or if you have what we call an upper level disturbance, which is a little bit like a cold front, but it's just a, sort of a smaller ball of energy that rolls through, it's something that will squeeze the moisture out of the atmosphere. Well, there's more there for it to work with. So that means that we have the potential for more flooding. And that, of course, is in places like this where we're fairly wet. Of course, out west where it's fairly dry, it means they get drier, so the extremes get more extreme. Here's some research. I, I meant to mention this earlier. We have, uh, we're a partner with a group called Climate Central. 
And so these are some graphics that they have put together. I, in my day, unfortunately don't have a whole lot of time to look at climate science. I've, I'm, I hate that, but I work 10 hours at what's gonna happen for the next seven days. So this group is wonderful because they really help to keep us on top of what's happening climate-wise in a way that we can share it with you guys and viewers as well. So, so it makes sense to what it means to our lives. So more downpours. If you guys remember, um, it was maybe three weeks ago, we had a storm come through, it rained very hard at the beginning of the week, and it flooded Crabtree. You know how that always happens, you know, the car go underwater and this and that. Well, I would say, I've, I've been, I don't want to tell you how long, I've been at WRL for three years, right? Um, <laughs> uh, but I remember a long time ago, I will not say the day, um, we, it would take a tropical system, it would take a hurricane or a tropical storm to cause flooding at Crabtree. And now we just had a regular low pressure system come through and dump all that rain and it flooded. So we're seeing more downpours. I should know better than that because when I do weather on TV, I get three minutes. So I should know. I'm like, no, <laughs> getting carried away here. So heavy rainfall trends are also going up. You can see two inch rainfall days are going up. Uh, the green is, is a half an inch and the blue is one inch. So the, all these graphics are just showing that our heavy rainfall potential is going up. So we're seeing more heavy rainfall as we go through years. So that means that we have a greater potential for flooding. And again, we saw that just a few weeks weeks ago out at Crabtree. Flooding has the highest fatality rate of any weather related uh, issue in the country. So last year in 2017, there were 126 deaths. The second place very close to it was heat. And that tends to affect folks in the northern states where they don't have as much air conditioning. We don't have as many heat-related deaths, but we have a lot of flood-related deaths in North Carolina. And would you believe this? I tell this to the kids, to the second graders. I say, how do you think people die during flooding? And they say, well, it floods and they can't get out of their house. I was like, would you believe that silly grown-ups drive their car into a flooded road? What? No! But they do. And it's funny. But it isn't, unfortunately. More people die during flooding by driving their car into a flood, a fl into the floodwaters. So the National Weather Service has a, a slogan, and it's corny: "Turn around, don't drown." But you know, it's it's true. Hurricanes bring us a lot of flooding as well. So warmer water means more fuel for hurricanes. They need ocean temperatures that are about 80 degrees to develop and grow. And the warmer those ocean temperatures are, the faster those hurricanes uh, uh, develop and the heavier the rain will be and the higher the storm surge with those uh, systems. We tend to hear, see more deaths from inland flooding than we do from hurricanes. People have gotten smart. They're not hanging out at the coast. They are evacuating when they're told to. So we have a lot more inland flooding issues. Um, but we're seeing more rapid intensification of tropical cyclones. That means that they're a little bit harder to predict. Tropical systems are our big killers here in North Carolina. If you remember back in uh, 2016, no, tw I'm sorry, 2011, <laughs> um, we had the big tornado outbreak here in Raleigh. That killed about 25 people. Uh, it's the tropical systems that really get us here. Hurricane Matthew killed 28 people in 2016, and Hurricane Floyd in 1999 was 35 people, and that was here in North Carolina. So staying safe in a changing climate means watching out for water. It means you are in a big hurry, and, and I'll say something that, you know, it's going to strike a chord with everybody. So your best canine friend is at home. There's water between you and your dog. Are you going to risk it? You have to think about that really carefully. Um, more flooding is going to happen in our area, in humid areas. We're going to see more drought and wildfires in dry areas. So in order to protect yourself, you got to know, are you going to be dealing with a flood? Are we going to have a tropical system? Shameless plug here. Um, our newly redesigned WRAL weather app. It actually is really cool. Um, it will, you can si sign up for different alerts. It'll tell you if lightning is within 10 miles of you. It'll tell you if heavy rain's coming your way. Lightning, by the way, is our number three weather-related killer in the country and here in North Carolina. So have a good source of weather information, even if it's not WRAL. That's not why I'm here today. Um, but have a good source, know what's coming your way, and know how to react to stay safe. And again, for climate change, that's going to be protecting yourself from flooding. And number one, it's not driving your car into a flooded room. <laughs>